is one of the things that sustains the home and make it to last forever. Now, I told you that we'll be celebrating 20 years of peaceful and joyful marriage this year. We put the, the celebration on the 4th of July, 4th of July. But we actually clocked, our marriage actually clocked 20 years on the 28th and 29th. Because we did the engagement 28th, we were joined on the altar 29th. So just be prepared. Hallelujah. Today, Christians no longer uh, are, are, are gradually looking like unbelievers. Let me put that in, that way. in, in marriage. You hear a fight in the house of the unbelievers beating themselves, and you'll be shocked. You hear Christians too in their house, they'll be beating themselves. Now, you hear Christians, unbelievers go to court, customary court, and the customary court, um, I want to know, uh, remember the name they call them. Uh, they are not judges, they call them one name. Huh? Uh, if I remember, I will tell you. The customary judge leader there, we now say, well, we have had the both cases. We are giving permit for you to separate. It will not be your portion. These are things that in those days we hear in the camp of unbelievers. Today it is gradually happening. In fact, it has even gotten to the altar now. That is no longer on the floor of members. Even pastors divorce their wives. So let's get it right. Let's look at what the Bible says. What every Christian should know about divorce. That's the subtopic of today. We'll look at what the Bible says. Now, let's look at the dictionary translation of divorce. Uh, in the Greek translation, it is called apostation. Now, an apostation is to, uh, and if you bring it down, it is de to defect. Now, it means, uh, now you hear that word, defection, defection among politicians that he was he was in apc he, he won the election under apc and he has just defected from apc to pdp now in the in the military they call them uh they use defection too for soldiers that run away from camp when they say okay we have assigned you go fight Boko Haram, and uh, if, if uh, a soldier now decides get to the battlefront and cross to Cameroon because maybe the battle is hard. Now, they call it treason. Now, and in the military, it is death penalty or life imprisonment depending on the reason that made him to flee from that battle. Praise the Lord. So, to divorce is to break away from a party. Or to break away from a covenant. Hear me. Marriage is a covenant. Did you get it? Marriage is a magic money. You have to be careful. We don't, so that you won't join. You know, if you are bringing a wood and uh, an iron together in joining, I want you to know that that joining will never last. Because wood and iron cannot join together. Now, if you are bringing aluminum together to join with iron, but actually, can it work? You can't wed them together. Aluminum and iron. You now say, okay, let's wed it to Eshaja, wed there. Back Concha, Eshaja, wed there. No, it, it won't work. Now, that's why we are teaching you now. So that in the future, you will not begin to say, ah, and I regret this marriage. Regret this marriage. Because biblically, let's look at the stand of God on divorce. Let's start. We have a lot of scriptures to read. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Let's start from there. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. It says, Therefore shall a man leave his father are you there? And his mother and shall what? Cleave unto his wife and they shall be what? How many? One. They shall cleave and become one cleave now if you get to your house now or let me not even go too far look at the burglary on this window now it is pieces of iron brought together hello 
Now, but if you are going to address it now, you want to name it, what will you call it? That's the burglary proof. You can't say, ah, everyone will return to poor. Everyone will return to poor. It has been soldered together. Now, you can't count them as pieces of iron. You call it together as burglary. Now, the same thing. Two people coming together is what forms a home. The Bible says they shall be joined in covenant and they shall become one. So in marriage, you are no longer two. That's why you must get it right. If you get it wrong, you will always be having problem. I say, okay, don't worry. Hey, brother Kuridi, you just try your best now. Bring that iron and that uh, aluminum together. Do it. If you try to use sodium, it won't work. If you try to use weather, what do you call that thing? Wedding machine, it won't work. Okay, brother Kuridi, they may say, okay, Esha, you can deliver a chef one. You can glue. Glue, Charlie, more temporarily. Abi, I want to glue. I want to, want to join. Now, deliver it and, and deliver the job. By the time you open once or twice, what will happen? It will fall down. So you know you are becoming one. You have to get it right. Just like we used to tell our people, see, see, see. If you don't love him, if you don't love her, if you are not satisfied, you know I told us last week, if you are not, if you are not pleased, don't go further. Broken courtship is still better. If time permits us today, we'll show us the effect of a divorce. What you will experience when you begin to have the when you experience divorce is re- that, that was made. Praise the Lord. So biblically, a couple becomes one. Let's look at more scriptures. Mark chapter 10 and verse 9. Mark chapter 10 and verse 9. Mark chapter 10 and verse 9. 10, 9. 10, 9. Not 10, 24. Mark chapter 10. Now look at this. This is another scripture. Still on marriage. That whatsoever God has joined together. What happened? Let not man put us on. This is the plan of God for marriage. I said it was not two weeks ago when I say that see, if you are going into marriage, understand that you are not going for holidays. Holiday. That okay, I'm just going for a while. I'm going on holiday. If the place is not conducive, I'll come back. It's for life. I come again, it's for what? How long? For life. What God has joined together. That's why, see, see, all of you that are young, you still have the opportunity to back out in a relationship that is not working. You know, that's why I always tell us, in Christian courtship, you don't put sex in. Make sure you put sex out of it. You don't bring romance into Christian courtship. Ah, we can kiss ourselves. Uh, we, can, we can hug ourselves. You don't do that in Christian courtship. These are things that unbelievers do. Because if you are doing that, you are tempting yourself and bringing yourself closer to a fall. You know why? All these things will block your view from seeing the things you are supposed to see. Because there are things you are supposed to see that will convince you to say, let's go ahead. And there are things you are supposed to see that will convince you to say, no, 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 no. I can't continue with this. What God has joined together. So once you are joined together, the Bible says no one can put asunder. So, while Rodada, and those of you that are married here, you two are thinking, I don't think I'll continue this thing, Job. We'll see the only biblical reason given for divorce. Romans chapter 7, verse 2. Romans chapter 7, verse 2. We have a lot of scriptures to look at. Romans chapter 7 and verse 2. Thank you. Verse 2, not 9. Can you see this one again? It says, for the woman, which at an husband is what? Is bound by the law to her husband. As long as what? He liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Can you see? Now, this scripture is showing us that the only separation that is permitted for a Christian marriage is death. A woman can 
marry somebody else as long the moment her husband passes on. To batiku uti free. Si o batiku, bibe li ni ofin di won po. That's why I say youth, you better get it right. People don't change in marriage, you understand that. Whatsoever does not change in courtship doesn't change when you get married. In fact, whatsoever does not change in courtship increases in marriage. If the lady knows how to keep malice in courtship, she'll keep more when she married. If the brother is an angry bird when he's single, he'll become an angry lion when he's married. So get it right. Let's move on. Let's move on. See another one. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11. We are looking at what every Christian should know about divorce. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 10 and 11. Now look at this. It says, and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Verse 11. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she departs, let her what? I didn't hear you. So if she says, I'm not even doing it again. Mishemo. Mishemo. Let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. This is the Bible. Now, if you decide to put away, this, what the Bible is saying is that, if you put your spouses away, remain unmarried. But once you have gone to the altar, you have, you know, in, in Africa we are, we do, our marriages is uh, three covenants. It is three covenants that ties us together. The first one is what we call the culture, cultural covenant. This is when, in our, we call it in Africa, we call it uh, engagement. Where the husband's family will come to your family all the tribes in Nigeria don't. Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, and other tribes. The husband's family will come to your family. Your family will place a demand on them. Well, okay, for dowry, for this and that. And after the conclusion, they will pay. Parental consent will be given. Parents will say, we release our daughter to you. Now, that one is the real uh, Parental what? Consent. Parents have not released you, understand you are not yet married. Your parents have not given their consent. So after that one is being done, you know in Nigeria, we move to the next one to make it what? Legal. You know why we should bind it legally? So that you can also have legal claims in the life of your husband. God forbid, if anybody should die young, somebody will not just come from the wife's or husband's family to say, Ah, Moako, I want property, egomi. You know, legally, whatever belongs to the husband belongs to the wife. Hello? Now, then, we are joined together in church. What is that one? We are making a covenant saying, God, we are doing a covenant in your presence. So, will you not just come out of that and say, Wo, wo, me te she mojo, me te she mojo. The Bible says, if you say you, you are not shame again, you are not doing it again, remain unmarried. That's why think it very well now. Let's see. I hope you are getting the understanding. Malachi chapter 2, 14 to 16. Malachi chapter 2, 14 to 16. Malachi 2, 14 to 16. Now look at this. Yet you say, Whereof, wherefore, because the Lord had been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou art dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Verse 15. God now declares intention. This is the Old Testament. And did not he make one, yet had the residue of the Spirit? And wherefore, where am I? Where for one? That he might seek a godly seed. He's bringing you together to seek a godly seed. Therefore, take it to your spirit and let, not, let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Verse 16. 16. For the Lord 
the God of Israel seeth that he does what? He hated putting away. For one covered violence with his garment. Seeth the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take it to your spirit that you'll deal not treacherously. Now what? God hated putting away. God hates the boss. This is the biblical stand. It's clear. Let's now go again. G- they now ask Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. Verse 38. The response. Okay. And he said, this is going to be the reason why I might allow you to divorce. Matthew 5 32. Matthew 5 32. But I say unto thee, look at this, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of what? Fornication. We see other simple versions. Cause her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. Now, can you see that this, Jesus is saying that, okay, okay, the only reason why I can permit you was to separate is when either of you goes into sexual sin. Now, sh- let's look at more simplified t- scripture. Let's read, um, uh, what version is this? What version is this? Okay. Too many of you using, using that as a cover-up for selfish whim, pretending to be righteous just because you are legal. Please, no more pretending. If you divorce your wife, you are responsible for making her an adulteress unless she has already made herself, sorry, made herself that by sexual promiscuity uh, and if, uh, sorry, and if you marry such a divorced adult, ad, ad, you are automatically, please touch this thing, you are automatically adulteress. You are automatically an ad, adulterer, sorry, yourself. You can't use legal cover to mask a moral failure. I love this version. Now, can you see its own explanation? It's clear. That the only reason why you can say, why a wife can come up to say, hey, well, Pastor, I've just come to decide. I don't think I can continue with my husband. The only reason why the pastor can stand clear is you caught him in the act of adultery, fornication. Now, once he's caught, you have a legal ground. You, you can choose to continue if you want. I've had cases like that. Even I've, me, I've handled cases like that. If I was only one of recent, the man said he took his wife to the hotel and his friends told him. So he made the inquiry and went to the wife. The wife confessed. He said, and the wife started crying. He said, Pastor, and I forgive her. People at times decide to say, well, it has happened. Don't let it happen again. But that is the only legal ground given by which there could be divorce. Hallelujah. So I wrote here, God permits divorce only when fornication occurs. And you know that fornication is when you allow relationship, sexual relationship with someone that is not your spouse. It means that apart from fornication, every reason that people point to as reason for divorce, is workable. I was asking one young lady, she wanted to leave her husband, and I said, please, can you give me a reason? She said, sir, I am tired of struggling and suffering with him. And I started counseling her. It's workable now. If you are tired of struggling and suffering, it's workable. And they just saw Okay, what solution do you have to offer to help this man to change his mindset or to come out of struggle? She says, I'm just tired. Now, in the second session, my wife will be coming up to share some things with us. But see, please, take note of this. We are Christians. The moment we are born again, you know what? We have entered into a covenant to live our life. How? According to the written word of God. 
We cannot be like people of the world. Anything that this Bible eh, is against, we should be against. Anything the Bible is for is what we should be for. That's why you that are young, think well now that you are young. Don't just say, okay, no, I see that, that lady. Pastor, you don't understand. Anytime I see something in me, you know, awake, something is awakening in me. I just want to have sex with her. If they tell you that what they do in marriage eh, is only sex, they are deceiving you. How many sex will you have in 20 years? If you think marriage is all about ah, it's more than uh, sex. Oh, should come to the marriage Because that is not it's not even up to one percent of what makes marriage. What makes marriage work is companionship. Sure, then you are. are we friends? Are we compatible? Do we relate at a pace? I'm not saying at the same level now. Do we, can, are we, do we flow? If you don't flow, it can't work. May God give us understanding. Let's welcome Mama as she comes forward. Put your hands together for her. I'll be coming back to land up. If you are clapping, clap. Praise God. Praise the mighty Jesus. Now, Papa has been able to show us what we should know about divorce. And uh, I will be showing us reasons why some people allow little thing to make them to divorce. And I will start my own from the book of Proverbs 22, verse 3. Also, Proverbs 27, verse 12 is the same scripture, but I mean, the same uh, word of God, but, in, you know, is the same thing, but different scriptural passage. Okay. Let's read it together. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple passed on and are punished. And let's see 27 12. 12. The same scripture, same proverb, same word is coming the second time. A, prover, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Praise God. And when I was searching the scripture again, something came into my heart from the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Let's read that place also so that we'll put it together Then I will tell us the first point. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Look at this scripture. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And verse 2. Verse 2. Who is there? Verse 2, please. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. And verse 3. We will stop there. Then I will. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the, in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, as I was reading through that scripture, down to where God called them, that Adam, where are you? Adam came up and said, I am here, Lord, but I'm ashamed to show myself to you because I'm naked. God asked him a question. We've been together for years. Why are you ashamed? Come out and let me see you. He said, but I'm naked. God asked him, who told you you are naked? He said, I noticed I'm just naked. I don't know. I don't know how I got here. And when God called them, God now asked, 
What happened? He said, the woman, if you read that scripture, he said, the woman you brought to me gave me a fruit to eat. But it all started from somewhere. And that would take us, I mean, take me to tell you the first point of what led to divorce. Number one is what we call mistrust. Mistrust. And I was searching the, the, the dictionary. That's the reason why I asked them to quickly give me my phone. Mistrust means to suspect. Not having confidence in someone. And when couple become suspicious of themselves, suspicions of themselves, you will discover that there is no how they are adding to what we are about to discuss about this morning. And on that it, I say, what do you think caused unhealthy jealousy, suspicion in a marriage? What can lead to that? What normally, you know, uh, 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 that's what we are, we are trying to treat this morning, which, says, which we say is mistrust. When somebody looks at someone and says, me trust them. You know that was what happened between Adam and God. They are both closed before. Now when God called, when God is walking in the garden of India, he knows where he will find Adam. But only for him to get there. Where are you? He said, I'm not, I'm not there, sir. What happened to you? Because I'm ashamed to come before you. Uh -uh. What happened? I am naked. And God begins to look at him. What is going on? And as we are coming down, do you know something kept coming to my heart? That you know that from that day on, if Eve should present anything to Adam, Adam will first check it well. And that is what is happening in our marriages today. When your spouse don't trust you any longer, you are actually telling each other that I am out of the ways, the rules and the regulation guiding us. At times, we are the cause. When we allow friendship with the opposite sex against the will of our spouse. God brought the woman to the man. This is your companion. Talk to each other. But if out of, I just want to know everything. You know, so many of us will believe that, oh, this man is caging me. Oh, this woman is caging me. Even this marriage is caging somebody. We are not free. I just want to make friends. Eve left the house, went to another man, which is serpent. Let me go and hear from him what he will need to say. And the Bible said the, the serpent asked her, did God say you should not touch? He said no. He said we should not eat. Touch, you will see that nothing will happen to you. So we are the cause of it. When we begin to have friendship with the, with the opposite sex against the will of our spouse. So many of us will believe that. What, 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 what is the meaning of that? Are you trying to tell me I should not relate with, some, with people any longer? You know, at times in our generation now, like from my own side, I don't, I don't like uh, mentioning him. One of us came up and said, Dad, Mom, I don't, want, I, I don't like having uh, female as friends. Two of us said, why? He said, because if you, if you make friends with, with females, they are, they are like this. But men are straight. And we kept trying to discourage the person. Oh, no, don't say that. It is not possible to have uh, an opposite sex as your best friend. What do you expect? Only for me to get, you know, we were discussing again, was it yesterday night? And uh, he, my husband was telling me, do you know that something happened? So and so person that is close to so and so person have asked so and so person out in relationship. And I told my husband, that is what it, that normally happens when as a woman or as a lady you make a man or a guy as your best friend what do you expect one way one way or the other something will ignite that love a man cannot uh, stand you know sin God has done it you know when, when uh, God brought Eve to Adam as the man saw her he said this woman shall be this one shall be called a woman and that was how they were ignited together. That is how God wired men. 
So, and you want, you as a lady, want to meet a man, your friend. What do you expect? In one way or the other, something like that will be coming up in his heart. But he may not know how to say it. I don't know whether you are getting me. And that's the reason why there should be a limit. There should be a limit. Some of us, okay, we are colleagues in the office. But we are very close. It's my bestie. Some things we don't, we can't discuss with our spouse at home. We discuss with them. And when it's going further, what do you expect? I met a colleague some, some few days ago, and we were both discussing it. She's a pastor, you know, a pastor in one of the biggest church in Nigeria presently and all over the world. And uh, she was telling me, I, because anytime we are together, she always says something in my marriage. And I kept wondering, why are you not happy? What is wrong? He said, I don't know, I don't know. So many things is crossing my heart and this and that. And I begin to explain it to one, a senior, uh, is, is a senior pastor too. We are together. He is a man and she is a woman married and the other one also married that one too was having issues in her mar in his marriage she too is having issues in her marriage and anytime they are together doing fellowship something comes up that needs you know that, that, that one or two of them to discuss about their marital issue do you understand the man will cancel her this is how we're supposed to do this is how it's supposed to be and at the end of the day he said but something spoiled the whole show I nearly get tempted. But inside my heart, I was saying, it's a lie. He said, do you know, the man asked me how. I said, your pastor, your senior, they, they normally call them so-so and so-so. I don't want to mention it because if I say it, so many people will know what it meant in their own denomination. So, I, as she was telling me, I, I look at her face. I said, are you sure you didn't fall for him? He said, I should not lie. I was already down emotionally. See, but I just remember that I am a married woman. He too is married. He's a senior person to me in the ministry. Imagine to that level. And somebody is telling me, it doesn't matter. We are close. He's my bestie. We can discuss. And on opposite sex, what do you expect? And before you know it, we, we are doing something together. So many messages started coming up. Bra, 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 it's on our phone. I said, what happened? He said, it's my husband. What happened? He said, my husband does not trust me. I said, no. Explain what is going on. He said, he does not trust me because he noticed that I always go to that person for counseling. And he said, something is wrong between two of you. I said, if you am the one, I will suspect you also. So, even if the man should call, in the next two minutes, she did not pick the call. The man will start sending messages. I know you are with that man. And we are, doing, we are do, busy doing something else. Mistrust can lead to divorce. Before you know it, the man will start sending. It's not because I allow you to do what you are doing presently. You won't have had that God not to pick my calls. Because he has met her somewhere where she's supposed not to be. I want to tell every one of us, please, for your marriage to work, for your marriage to, don't do things that will make your husband or your wife to suspect you. Or else you won't enjoy that marriage. So, I said, when we allow friendship with the opposite sex against the will of our husband, our, our spouse, sorry, there is no how mistrust will come in. The moment you are married, understand that there should be limits to your closeness with the opposite sex. There should be a limit. The moment you are married, because you may mistakenly fall. And the inner, inside your heart, you know there's something, you know, I don't know. The, the, the guilt will be there. And even the other person will always be on your neck. Where are you? Why don't you pick the call? Presently, where, where, where are you? Huh? Can't you pick your call? Can't we talk there? Something is coming up. And the other person may begin to think, let me go and do the same. Hallelujah. So, the moment you are married, understand that there should be 
limit your closeness with the opposite said. Always have that consciousness. I am married. If my husband should get to know where I am presently, or my wife should get to know where I am presently, will he or she be happy with me? I want to, I'll, I'll quickly share a story with us. One of us, I could remember then, that's been a long time now. Uh, she was engaged with a, with a guy, and uh, anytime she's coming from the office, one of his of her boss will be the one to, to draw my I mean to draw, draw drop her. And this very particular day, as she was coming again, it was the the, the uh, his boss, I mean her boss, that dropped her again at the entrance of their gate. Only for the guy to be peeping through ears, they've told him that somebody has been coming behind. So he too was at a lot. As they as they dropped the lady, she went closer. He went closer to her. Who is that guy? You say you are engaged to me, but this guy has been the one dropping you off for the past two, three weeks now. He said, There is nothing. He's my boss. The next thing, pa on her face. Do you think we can marry ourselves doing this? We've not even get getting to the aspect of going to the call, I mean, to the registry and also, you are doing this. If we get married, what will happen? And that was how the whole thing, the relationship, scattered. The moment you are engaged, or the moment you are married, let there be space. Yes, you relate. Yes, you talk to people you are, but let there be limits. So that you won't make your spouse to be, to, to be suspecting and be saying, are you sure they are not? Do you understand? We are in the world that anything can happen. Before you know it, they can I swear, just snap you and post it and you are in soup. Photo, what do you call it now? Photoshop is everywhere. In Koto once up And these are the things that lead to divorce. When you allow undue closeness with the opposite sex, you are practical, you are, you are directly uh, 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 doing, I mean, making your husband or your spouse to think you are doing something negative outside. So you must be very careful. And not, an opposite sex should not give you, uh, okay, okay, let me, uh, don't let me jump. Okay, let me put this that an, an opposite sex should not call you during uh, odd hours. Some of the things that you can do to prevent that, please, we can discuss here. But as soon as I get home, there's one of us that normally do that. It may be when I and my husband were together and that he wants to pour out his mind. And it will be that time, he will start calling. I will show my phone to my husband. See the person that, is, that wants to talk with me. And we, will meet, we may be on phone for the next 30 minutes. If my phone calls, or maybe I just use time to off it, he will call back and we are still on need for the next another 30 minutes. Thank God I'm the type. I would let him know this is what is going on. He said this and that and that and that. But you know, something happened. And I, I decided in my heart. He, he was not thinking otherwise. Do you understand? But I felt if I am the one, how will I feel? Maybe we are eating together. The call comes in. And I want to pick it. How will I tell him that, sorry, he's so and so, so person. He's supposed to relate with him. But he decided to to relate with me. How? What did I want to offer him? Yes, I can advise him. But to some extent, I think he's uncomfortable. So as a woman, I understand. How will I call this person from calling me often and often that my husband will not start thinking otherwise? He goes to his stage. Anytime he calls, 
I won't pick his calls. He will call and call. One day he now sent message. Why are you avoiding my calls? I said because I have been very busy. It's enough for you to understand that I don't like that style. But so many of us will think, yes, he's busy and busy. We are doing ministry together. But he's getting out of hand. These are the limits we don't put in place. And we get ourselves into problems. And we say, my marriage does not work. It will work now. You are busy with some other person. It too will be busy. You are actually teaching the, the said your spouse to do otherwise. Okay? You two, you can go ahead and do it. So what you, do, you don't want to, uh, what you cannot take, don't give it to another person. That is something I want us to understand this morning. I said, an opposite says, should not give you some, uh, some uh, kind of gift that will look a kind of uh, be suspicious. And the husband will be saying, Ki ori will she. I be aware of myself, Ki le she fun, fi fun yin. You know, I, I don't know. Some of us say, let me hide it. I bought it with my money. Somebody will say, as I was going, I just, and it was given to you by someone else. By the time the old show come up, do you know that such a thing can scatter your home? Like, my husband said, share your experience about this. One time, one of our pastors came up and said, Mama, I have a gift for you. And by the time I get home, I was happy that, ah, gift, you can't fool me. Man, I go, oh, I have a gift only for me to open it. And I saw bra. Underwear. I say, ha, how do you get my size? Show one to the other. Oh, no. By the time, you know, we, we laugh at on it, we, we discuss. And one well, night, and I get back to church. And I went to the person. I said, How do you get my size? He said, He measure it with his hand. The heart of a man. And during that time, I can remember vividly now. That it was because I was, he normally comes to me that I should cancel him consigning his wife. So emotionally, because of what I have been canceling him about, you know, he begins to desire me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And that was the reason the only gift he can give me is to give me bra. What kind of a gift is that? Or you as a woman, you want to give somebody a gift and you get him a boxer. For another person's husband, you get a I, 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 more concise here, XL or X lemma. You know, there are some gifts that you don't, I don't know. So many of us would. would, would we we'll, we'll overlook it, but it has meaning. And the person will begin to think, what is she trying to say? Like me, that was the last time I cancelled that person. That was the last time. I said, if you have that desire in your heart, definitely you are going somewhere. You can as well give me money instead of that underwear that you gave me. I don't know whether you are getting me. So, you collecting such and you get some, ah, sister and sister bought this for me. The man or the woman will be looking at you, eh, go on. Even if he does not want to think that way, you have given that person the privilege to think otherwise. And the person will begin to suspect, begin to, to check on you. Every minute and then, where are you? Oh, you are with sister and sister person. You are with, because you are the one who first started it. So, please, for marriage to work, guide this. An opposite says, should not take some kind of posture when taking a photograph with you. You know, some of us, we don't count it. A married woman, somebody just come up and put his hand at your back. Hey, cheese. And you snap it and you post it on your WhatsApp, on your Facebook. Don't you think there is something 
that is wrong in doing that. Consider relationship on, except my brother, and if my husband is there. You can't even see me. Put my hand on my brother's knee. My own brother. I don't do such. They know. They can say, eh, hey, you know, and I will use my remove my my neck from their hands. I, you know, I have brothers that are very funny. Like the one. The, <laughs> You know, I'm the last one, and anytime they come around, they want to show that they care and like that, and they will just put, I say, no. If any of our member comes in and they don't know him, or do you understand? It may sense a negative thought in their heart. So, you now go ahead, you now sit down. What do they Hey, your photo. You post it. Okay, Shabai. You two will come at the back. He, you, these are things that will make even if you have been traveling for some days now, for some weeks he has never for once called me and I may not pick it calls, he will call and call mm. when I get to where I'm going hello man of God, I am in so sad so place presently, yeah. do you know this is my colleague the man will ask her show me your room you say her she will now go to the bed. So this is the bed. This is the kinikong. Show me your colleagues. Show me, show me your friend. I say, please, I don't like it. Deal with your issue. Don't drag me into it. He said, but I noticed your husband has not been calling. I say, yes. This is 20 years. If it's money, 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 money. So many of you, you are going to Shokoto, you are in Kankancha. And they will begin to, to, to suspect. We, we, but you didn't tell me you are going this far. We are the cause of it. Let's adjust. So that there won't be any kind of thing called mistrust. The person will have confidence in you. In fact, we wrote to some extent, we said, an opposite says, should not eat in the same place with you. Me and my husband said, has it ever happened to you before? He said, no. So, me either. I never allow such. It will get me irritated. I can't do it. Or you drink bottle water. What's the meaning of that? You are trying to tell him, it doesn't matter. Let it matter when it needs to be mattered. You, you understand? So now, at the end of the day, you and your spouse will have peace of mind. He knows where you are. She knows where I know where my wife is. She's at so and so place. My husband is at so and so place. Not that, me, mom, you got to live at home. Please, for us to have a smooth marriage, a smooth journey in mind, Let's start cultivating that attitude from now that we are still single. So that you will not have problem when you get married. And you married, please, let's start from now. So that there will be trust within herself. Your spouse will trust you and say, I know where she will, I know what she can do. On this aspect, em kuro money. Like one of her sisters, in those days she's married now, she said, if they should tell her that so so and so so thing happened to Pastor Princeway, she will stand and say, So me and my husband will now look at her. Ah, me, I just walk away. My husband now asks a question. Why do you say that? He said, Because we have tested you. We've tried you several times. I don't need to be there. Even when he's talking to somebody inside the office, he used to ask me in those days, Are you not jealous? I said, For what? For what? Me, I, but that, that time that you are discussing, I will carry my chair and come and sit outside. The only thing I used to say is that I am afraid. It's not left to my husband to know how to comport himself. I can't fight. You have not seen any stain on my body before. So I am umojaja. But because we trust ourselves, can you stay in a corner 
or in a room with an opposite sex without having a, a kind of desire towards that person? If it's like that, conquer it now. Before you get married. Because it will, be, it will get worse by the time you get married. Thank you. Please put your hands together. That's the point from my own side. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you learned something? I didn't hear you. So that's the point. We are looking you know, under this segment. That's what we'll be looking at in the next service. Uh, 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 reasons where, you know, why conflicts break out that now leads to divorce. And she has told us mistrust. Now, and you know, for trust to be built, you need to do the things that will make you trusted. You know, most people, most of you are the reason why your spouse don't trust you. Because of, they cannot predict you. Now, these 20 years, you've had her preach. These 20 years, she knows, she, there is nobody anywhere that will say, eh, eh, there's one name that is calling me that she doesn't know. Or possible. I've forgotten my phones at home several times. That she will call me. She will call uh, uh, Apple or, or Precious. Papa, take back the phone. Don't bad off his and you can't call that one. Hey, check your phone one, but don't bad that lemma, but that delay. Hello, me, you'll back the phone one. Don't bad law nature. Could it be all right? Oh, my father. Or come back the phone, yeah. Danger call, come out, well, danger call, my wife. The danger call is coming. Switch off that phone. The danger call is coming. Switch off that phone. You are the reason. Listen, there is no smoke without fire. Some of you are the reason why your spouse, when you can, you, you, she cannot trust you. He cannot trust you. There is no how it will not degenerate to the point that if care is not taken, it leads to divorce. I've handled several counselings, several can, these 23 years. And do you know that most of it is this number one point, mistrust. I, I and my wife were talking two days ago. I said, I don't know. Maybe it's the kind of born again we had, the foundation we had. And we told ourselves, we said, maybe we should look for our pastor, the man that raised us, and we should thank him. In the church where we are raised, we were raised, we used to see it as punishment that time. You don't shake a sister, talk less of hugging her. Because if you hug as a sing single, you will kiss as married. You will even peck. Oh, sister, it's been long I've seen you. Come and give me an Holy Ghost peck. Nah. You know what you'll be doing? You'll be giving the, the spouse of that sister an impression. That's why at times, some of you don't know the reason why I do some things. Now, there are some of you that after service you like to come and see me. Some of you will come with gifts. That's why I don't stay in the office. Do you know why? I trust you. But if I am inside the office, me and you, and we are praying, uh, your spouse at the other corner, me, Mobiaku, it trust here. Oh, Mama, okay, prayer is your work, Papa, she is your daddy. Yahomi, Luma, Are you getting what I'm saying? So, you know what I prefer? My yard, Joko Sibi. Sister, to Baba, Eri, Mimbi, my pray for him. Not because I don't trust you, but because I don't want to give your spouse a negative impression. Am I communicating? These 20 years, I'm sharing with you the practicals. I have never eaten in the same place with any woman that is not my wife. Whether they put rice. Apart from my children. Now, and listen, she says something here I want us to react and close with. If you are married, there are some level of dignity you should begin to maintain. As a married person, and we reckon what? You know, came back. You do, there are some jokes you don't crack with opposite sex. Ah, sister, you are now lepacious. Ah, ah. You are doing it, you are doing it, you are doing it, you are doing it, you are doing it. You know, there are some, there are some jokes. If you do it, you are devaluing your spouse. So if you will now play, ah, 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 mommy, shame me, Lord, 
Daddy Shemile Rumi just working at that particular time. Yeah. And he will expect you as mommy Shemile Rumi to, to, to express, to say something or do something that will make him to feel that, yes, this man respects me. You two, you now smile for illustration last one. How many you going to agree? Are you getting what I'm saying? There are, you are married. There are some rest. Give your spouse that honor. How can you stay? Your, your wife, you are looking at another person's wife, another sister. Sister, you are looking beautiful. Have you said that to your wife? Nobody should look beautiful to you again apart from your wife. So you look at you, you are standing, you are looking at a lady. A, you are married, though, and you're looking at a lady. Oh, you are looking, ah, uh-uh, baby. Uh-uh. It's dishonor to your wife. These are things that, if, listen, we are going far in life, and all God will take every one of us to where we are going. One of the, one of the, one of the, uh, the cup that every great person will drink from, hear me, is what we call false accusation. Go see any to ga ti won paromori. Go find out. You must not give them the room to have a story to tell about you. I am so sure, eh? I am so sure, 100% sure, I will get to a point in greatness that some people will say, that Pastor Prince will, who knows how many ladies he must have slept with. I know that there will be people that will stand up to defend me. I was telling my children yesterday, we were washing at home together. I said, see, since I've been your daddy, have you ever seen anything green that is not the bottle of Tim? You know Tim, green bottle, uh, uh, seven up, green bottle, um, mountain dew, green. Have you ever seen anything like that around me? He said, no. Have you ever seen any lady that now look at, uh, my daddy is inside the room with one lady. Has he ever happened? They said, no. I said, that is how Christian I am. That if me as your parents, your daddy, don't have female friends. I was telling my children, you don't need male friends. Just face where you are going. Do you know why? Because the world that we are in, you don't know where you are going. You only know where you are. Now, if somebody ever tell you that you will become chairman one day, will you ever believe? You, never, you don't know where you are going. If ever, anybody ever tell you that you will become boss where you are working today, will you ever believe? You don't know where you are going. You don't know where God will take you in the next future. That's why you need to be careful now. So that when they begin to cook up story, uh, Kodini Mini. I was telling somebody, there's this great man of God, he's a prophet. This one will come online. He's had sex with me. This one will come up online. He had sex with me. It's not that I'm believing or not believing them. But you know what I discover? I discover that he does not have much people speaking for him. I know this. If anybody anywhere come up and say, Pastor Prince, he is a fornicator. I don't need to speak. If church member doesn't speak, my children will speak. If my children doesn't speak, my wife will speak. And the same thing with my wife. We don't live our life because now we are so busy. She's traveling a lot now. Me too, I'm traveling a lot. She just came back from a journey. Me, I'm about to go, in, go for another three days journey. Tabati build the trust. This is opportunity to doubt ourselves and end our marriage. Have you learned something today? Learn it, please. The Lord bless you. We'll continue in the second service. Let's put our hands together for Jesus, for the word, and for the spirit of counsel.